But by the grace of God, I am what I am. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Church, on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost, this year, celebrates also the feast of St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo in Africa, one of the greatest lights in the entire Church. And we thank God today for having given us and to the Church in the person of St. Augustine such an illustrious penitent, so eminent a saint, so admirable a doctor, and he was the oracle of the consuls, the greatest light of his time. And he became the father of fathers, and in a sense the doctors and the doctors. And why? That all came about because of tears and of prayers of a mother. For many years, St. Monica, his mother, wept and prayed for his conversion. And then later on, St. Augustine, after his conversion, he would write, he would make a public confession, he wrote his entire life, his errors, his sins, but also his conversion in the book which is known as the Confessions of St. Augustine. And when we look in this book, in this public confession, if you want, we see three faces of his life or three pictures. We see his youth, and we see his conversion, and then we see him as a saint. The first picture, his youth. St. Augustine in his youth attended the best schools of learning of his time. And the divine office says on his feast, he excelled all his fellow students in his studies. St. Augustine was bright. He was admired by all for his brilliant talents. And he himself knew that he was the best student. And that was the cause of his ruin. Science and knowledge without humility are worth nothing in the sight of God. God hates pride and for certain he humbles the proud in due time. And for certain he humbled this proud fool, student, and intellectual star, Augustine. The very bright and proud student fell into errors, in fact, in the heresy of the Manichaeans and the most terrible vices of impurity. And in vain did his conscience reproach him. He did not listen to his conscience for years. In vain did reproach his mother, St. Augustine. In vain it seemed she was pleading with him and weeping over him and prayed for him. And the story 
of St. Augustine, in particular, the prayer and the, the tears of his dear mother, St. Monica, should be a consolation for all those, for all those fathers and those mothers who pray for years and years for the conversion of his children. And we should never doubt Almighty God. But Augustine knew he was on the wrong way, on the wrong path. But he quieted his conscience, saying, Not now, but tomorrow. Not now, but tomorrow. And he said this to his weeping mother, St. Monica. Not now, but later on, I will make good. I will make up. And if St. Augustine would stand here and preach to you today, he would look to you and say perhaps of some to you, if my case should be your case, do not say as I said, later, later. Not today, but tomorrow. But if you have sinned, if you have fallen into serious sin, rise, resurrect at once. And if you are a habitual sinner, if you have a vice on your soul, break the chains of sin at once. And don't say, not today, but tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. And this was his youth. In the second picture, the second phase of his life was his beautiful conversion. For 18 long years, St. Augustine led a life of sin, sin after sin. For 18 long years, God's mercy waited most patiently. For 18 long years, St. Monica wept and prayed for his conversion. And then, St. Augustine realized his error and his state of life, and he humbled himself. Tears did flow from his eyes when he was listening to the sermons of St. Ambrose in Milan. He had gone there to learn the art of public speaking. But the speaker, St. Ambrose, touched his heart. St. Ambrose used the words of St. Paul, Brethren, the night is far advanced, the day is at hand. Lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Walk becomingly as in the day, not in debauchery and wantonness, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Augustine says later on, the apostle is speaking to me. Such has been my life. And thus, St. Augustine converted. <laughs> thus, from the sinner, Augustine became the converted Christian, St. Augustine. And Augustine's conversion was so sincere 
he was not ashamed at all to confess his sins before the entire world in his confessions. He writes the story of his sinful life in the chapters called the Confessions. And his conversion is so real, so serious, that from that moment he fears even the shadow of sin. His conversion is so constant that on his deathbed he had the penitential psalms of David placed before him. And conscious to the last, he read them amid of a flood of tears as the divine office narrates. What about us? What about our penance? Let us recall at times the history of our sins, beginning with the sins in our childhood, down to the present day, to today. After such a story of sins, where is our penance? The saint said at the end of his life that no one should depart from this world without having done penance, even if he is not conscious of, my, of any fault. And then after his conversion, by the grace of God, he became a saint. The love of St. Augustine. His heart was crushed with bitterness at the thought of his past, and he found relief only in his ardent love of God. In the bitterness of his heart, he used to cry out, Too late, O oh God, have I loved thee. Or beauty ever ancient, ever new. And he asked for himself a greater heart, a bigger heart, that he may love God more ardently. He tries to inflame the hearts of his fellow men with the love of God to compensate God for the years lost and wasted in sin. And we represent him with his heart in his hand because he loved God so much. And even in his old age, he still weeps bitterly over these first 18 years of sin. That he says, Servo amavi te, too late, O oh my God, have I loved thee. And my heart was restless until it found rest, O oh God, in thee. And these are the three beautiful and touching and instructive pictures or faces of his life which St. Augustine is teaching us. You may find yourself in the life of St. Augustine as well. Too late, oh my God, have I loved thee. Our heart, or the human heart, craves for God longs for God in truth because God has created it in such a way. Our heart is homesick for heaven. Our heart is restless until it finds rest in God. And when you look at the human heart, it is so small, you can cover it 
with the palm of your hands. But it is so big, it is so great, that only God can fill it and satisfy it. Too late, oh my God, have I loved thee. And my heart was restless until it found rest, O oh God, in thee. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.